Hello everyone. Um, it's just a little bit more info again, um, like most of my videos are. A lot of people don't know these things. <coughs> and, you know, a lot of people do, but don't think it's so important to tell people. Um, this one's just, I'm just going to do a quick one on um, balancing, how you balance a helicopter, the major one. And um, I'm going to do a little bit on voltage drop. So if you want to run a 6 volt pack, but some of your servos are 4.8 or they, they don't actually take a 7 volt charge from a fully charged 6 volt pack. Um, first thing, simple thing, is helicopter balancing. Now we do this with the helicopter exactly how it is now. The blades along the length of the helicopter, okay, something relatively flat, flat piece of ground, and we pick the helicopter up on the fly bar here and lift it off the ground. That's how we balance it, to see how balanced it is. Now, if it's not balanced, we have to shift the weight around, and mostly we do that by moving the battery. Now, this is balanced. I'm just going to show you what it looks like when it's balanced. So, if we look at the skids, when I lift it up, they need to be quite parallel with the ground. I'm picking it up from the fly bar, pick it up and that's how it's balanced. A tad, a tad on the heavy side nose in is a little bit better so if it's not perfectly square you want it to be a bit nose which is a little bit like that but not backwards. So that's the helicopter balance. Pick up by the fly bars in this position and see how the skids are parallel to the ground. Now if it's not, the only thing it can really move around, I'll just take this canopy off. Is you have to move the battery. Now my battery is way out in front. That's a six volt battery, five cell. This is a re the reason is because this is a 90 boom. It's the same as my 90. I put a 90 boom on it. Um, and it's two inches longer so all the tail gearbox and that is two inches further out and as the 90 engine is heavier than the 60 my helicopter is unbalanced so I've had to put a metal strut on my battery tray here and extend the battery out Now that's out a long way it's all fixed on it's all nice but I've moved it out that far so that the helicopter is balanced so it's nice and flat don't forget to put your canopy back on this is a lot of weight put this back on clip it on and then do your test don't forget to put your canopy on even if it's plastic it's a lot of weight compared with what's going on so that's how we balance the helicopter is we move the battery backwards and forwards I mean on the old boom the battery was underneath here I've now got my receiver, my second part of the receiver underneath. Um, so to balance it you need the battery to move the battery around on the helicopter to get that balance just right. Um, now this 6 volt step down you can buy things in shops to step down 6 volts down to kind of 5 volts. Um, they're just two diodes a diode will take out about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 of a volt. If you have two diodes in series, you can take out kind of 1.4, 1.3 volts. So you can drop that voltage down and keep it around the 5.3 down to 5 volts or so, which means the tail servo on this helicopter is only 4.8. It can run on that. Now how I've done it on here, I've bought two large ampage um, diodes uh, I soldered them together, they're here, and they're in line with the power to my gyro, because the gyro supplies the power um, to the tail servo. And they sit there, and they're big ampage, so they don't get warm at all. They can handle the amps going through it to run the fast digital tail servo and power up the gyro. There's not a problem. If you was like on my 90, if you had full digital only 
you've got to look into it a bit more because even these big ones are going to get hot especially with the ampage going around all the servos and the whole helicopter to step it down so you have to be a bit careful and look into that another way but if you've got analog servos and you just want to keep your gyro and your tail servo at 5 volts then that's ample that is perfect for the job there's not a problem you can buy units already wired up um, this is one of them units there it is the diodes are in line on the power side of the cable and you just put this in line with your tail servo or your gyro but the reason why I haven't used this is because these are small diodes and uh, the current going through can vary and if you're up for 10 minutes this tail servo is banging away these can get really hot and if they foul that's it you've lost you lose all the back end so that's the problem with uh, that's why I haven't put this unit on I personally think it's too small a lot of people run try running their whole helicopter on these things and they get really hot and they can blow and that's it you've lost it all so that's why I've stuck to two big diodes and I'm only controlling the the gyro and the tail servo all these can take the six volts they're analog but because it's six volts they actually work a lot faster than on the 4.8 they get a little bit more torque and a little bit more speed so for those who want to know how it's done basically that's it you either buy one of these and put it in line with what you want to control or you get your own diodes bigger ones preferably that handle a lot more current and put them in line just like this with your gyro or your tail servo or whatever else you want to do they're called step downs they just each diode should step the voltage down 0.6 or 0.7 volts so your tail servo should never blow up